Hello everyone and welcome back to our channel. Today, we're exploring the fascinating world of natural wonders that were once considered supernatural. These awe-inspiring phenomena puzzled our ancestors, inspiring myths and legends, but modern science has since unraveled their mysteries. Join us as we delve into five incredible natural wonders and discover the scientific explanations behind them. From the shimmering curtains of the aurora borealis to the fleeting emerald flash of the setting sun, we'll uncover the science that makes these wonders possible. So, buckle up and prepare to be amazed by the power and beauty of the natural world. For millennia the night sky has been a canvas for myths and legends, and few celestial displays have captivated the human imagination quite like the aurora borealis. Imagine standing beneath a sky ablaze with vibrant dancing lights, their ethereal glow illuminating the frozen landscapes of the north. These are the Northern Lights, a spectacle that has inspired awe and wonder for generations. Ancient Norse mythology described the aurora as a bridge, Bifrost, connecting the realm of the gods to the human world. Other cultures saw it as the breath of mythical creatures or the reflections of celestial warriors. But what causes this mesmerizing display? The story of the Aurora Borealis begins 93 million miles away on the surface of our sun. The sun, our nearest star, is a giant ball of hot, electrically charged gas. This gas is in constant motion, creating a powerful magnetic field that extends far into space. Sometimes this magnetic field gets tangled up and when it snaps back into place, it releases a burst of energy in the form of solar wind. This solar wind is a stream of charged particles that travels through space at incredible speeds. When these charged particles from the sun reach Earth, they encounter our planet's own magnetic field. This field acts as a shield, deflecting most of the solar wind away from Earth. However, some particles manage to slip through, especially near the Earth's magnetic poles. These charged particles then collide with atoms in Earth's upper atmosphere, exciting them and causing them to release energy in the form of light. This light is what we see as the aurora borealis. The colors of the aurora depend on the type of atom being excited and the altitude at which the collision occurs. The most common color, a pale yellowish green, is produced by oxygen molecules at an altitude of about 60 miles. Red auroras are produced by oxygen at higher altitudes, while blue and purple auroras are caused by excited nitrogen molecules. The dancing, shimmering movements of the aurora are caused by fluctuations in the solar wind and the interaction of the charged particles with Earth's magnetic field. These fluctuations create complex and ever-changing patterns, making each auroral display unique and captivating. The aurora borealis is a testament to the interconnectedness of our solar system. It's a reminder that even in the darkest of nights, the sun's energy can reach us, creating a celestial ballet of light and color that continues to inspire wonder and awe. Imagine a volcano erupting, spewing molten lava and ash into the sky, but that's not all. Amidst the fiery chaos, flashes of lightning dance around the erupting plume, illuminating the night sky with an eerie, otherworldly glow. This is volcanic lightning a phenomenon that has both fascinated and terrified people for centuries. Ancient civilizations often attributed volcanic eruptions to the wrath of the gods, and the accompanying lightning only reinforced this belief. The Romans, for example, believed that Vulcan, the god of fire, forged weapons for the gods within volcanoes, and the lightning was seen as a byproduct of his celestial workshop. However, the true nature of volcanic lightning is far more grounded in science than mythology. While volcanic eruptions are undoubtedly powerful events, the lightning they produce is not caused by divine intervention but by the complex interplay of physical forces. The key to understanding volcanic lightning lies in the composition of the volcanic plume itself. This plume is a mixture of hot gas, ash, and rock fragments, all ejected from the volcano's vent with tremendous force. As this material is violently ejected, friction between the particles generates static electricity, much like the static charge you might experience from rubbing a balloon against your hair. This static charge builds up within the plume, creating an imbalance of electrical potential between different parts of the plume and the surrounding atmosphere. When the electrical potential difference becomes large enough, it overcomes the insulating capacity of the air, and a sudden discharge of electricity occurs, producing a bolt of lightning. The intensity and frequency of volcanic lightning can vary greatly depending on the specific characteristics of the eruption. Factors such as the composition of the magma, 
the speed of the eruption, and the amount of water vapor present can all influence the electrical properties of the plume and the likelihood of lightning. For instance, eruptions involving more silica-rich magma tend to produce more lightning due to the higher electrical conductivity of the resulting ash particles. Moreover, the presence of water vapor in the plume can enhance lightning activity. As the water vapor cools and condenses into tiny ice crystals, these crystals collide with the ash particles, further increasing the static charge within the plume. This process, known as triboelectrification, is similar to how lightning is generated in thunderstorms, highlighting the shared principles underlying these seemingly disparate phenomena. Volcanic lightning, therefore, is not a supernatural event but a fascinating example of how natural forces can create spectacular electrical displays. It's a reminder that even in the most chaotic of events, there are underlying scientific principles governing the behavior of the natural world. Imagine a glowing orb of light hovering in midair, defying gravity and radiating an eerie luminescence. It moves erratically, sometimes darting through the air, other times floating serenely. This is ball lightning, a rare and elusive phenomenon that has puzzled scientists and eyewitnesses for centuries. Reports of ball lightning date back centuries, often associated with thunderstorms and described as glowing spheres of various colors, ranging from bright white to yellow, orange, or even blue. Some accounts describe the orbs as silent, while others report hissing or crackling sounds. Despite numerous anecdotal accounts, ball lightning remains one of the most mysterious atmospheric phenomena. Its fleeting nature and unpredictable behavior make it difficult to study, and scientists have yet to reach a consensus on its precise cause. Unlike ordinary lightning, which is a sudden discharge of electricity between clouds or between clouds and the ground, ball lightning appears to be a self-contained entity, persisting for seconds or even minutes, much longer than a typical lightning flash. Numerous theories have been proposed to explain ball lightning, but none have been definitively proven. One early theory suggested that ball lightning was caused by the combustion of flammable gases released during a lightning strike. However, this theory failed to explain the longevity and stability of the observed spheres. Another theory proposed that ball lightning was a form of plasma, a superheated state of matter in which electrons are stripped from atoms, creating an electrically charged gas. This plasma theory gained traction with the observation that ball lightning often appears after a lightning strike, suggesting that the intense energy of the strike could create a localized region of plasma. However, maintaining a stable plasma sphere for an extended period would require a confining force, which remains unaccounted for in this theory. More recent theories explore the possibility that ball lightning is a result of intense electromagnetic fields created during a lightning strike. These fields could trap and compress ionized air, forming a glowing sphere that persists until the fields dissipate. Other hypotheses involve exotic phenomena like superconductivity, where certain materials can conduct electricity with zero resistance at extremely low temperatures. However, replicating such conditions in the Earth's atmosphere seems implausible. The lack of a definitive explanation has fueled speculation and fascination surrounding ball lightning. Some researchers believe that various phenomena might be misidentified as ball lightning, such as short-lived glowing embers from fires or even hallucinations induced by electromagnetic pulses. Despite the ongoing mystery, the pursuit of understanding ball lightning continues. Scientists are developing new instruments and techniques to capture and analyze this elusive phenomenon. With advances in high-speed cameras, spectroscopy, and electromagnetic field detectors, researchers hope to gather more conclusive evidence that will shed light on the true nature of ball lightning. Picture this, a ship caught in a raging storm, the wind howling, waves crashing against the deck. Suddenly, a strange glow appears on the masts and rigging, casting an eerie bluish light. This is St. Elmo's fire, a phenomenon that has captivated sailors and landlubbers alike for centuries. St. Elmo's fire is named after Erasmus of Formiae, the patron saint of sailors, also known as St. Elmo. Sailors in ancient times often interpreted the appearance of this glow as a sign of protection from the saint, believing it signified that their ship would weather the storm. However, the true nature of St. Elmo's fire is far less mystical and rooted in the science of electricity. It's a type of corona discharge, a phenomenon that occurs when a sharp or pointed object, like a ship's mast or a lightning rod, is subjected to a high electrical potential difference compared to the surrounding air. During a thunderstorm, for instance, 
the atmosphere becomes highly charged creating a strong electric field. When this electric field interacts with a pointed object, it concentrates the electrical charge at the tip. This concentration of charge ionizes the surrounding air molecules causing them to lose or gain electrons and become electrically charged. This process creates a plasma, a superheated state of matter in which electrons are stripped from atoms, resulting in a glowing halo around the object. The bluish color of St. Elmo's fire is characteristic of the ionization of air molecules, particularly nitrogen and oxygen. The discharge itself is generally not harmful as the current involved is relatively low. However, the presence of St. Elmo's fire does indicate a high electrical potential difference in the atmosphere, signifying the possibility of lightning strikes. Sailors have long recognized this association, knowing that the appearance of St. Elmo's fire could herald a more dangerous electrical storm. While St. Elmo's fire is most commonly associated with thunderstorms and ships at sea, it can also occur on land, particularly around tall pointed structures like church steeples, radio towers, or even aircraft wings. In fact, any object with a sharp point subjected to a strong electric field can potentially exhibit St. Elmo's fire. This phenomenon serves as a reminder that electricity is not confined to man-made devices, but is an integral part of the natural world, manifesting in diverse and sometimes spectacular ways. Imagine watching the sun sink below the horizon, its golden rays painting the sky in hues of orange and red. As the last sliver of the sun disappears, a fleeting emerald green flash illuminates the sky, a magical spectacle that vanishes as quickly as it appeared. This is the green flash, a rare and elusive phenomenon that has inspired awe and wonder for centuries. For centuries, the green flash was considered a mythical event, a sailor's tale passed down through generations. Some believed it granted good luck to those who witnessed it, while others attributed it to optical illusions or tricks of the light. However, the green flash is not a myth or a hallucination. It's a real optical phenomenon caused by the interaction of sunlight with the Earth's atmosphere. As sunlight passes through the atmosphere, it gets refracted or bent due to the varying density of air layers. This refraction separates white sunlight into its constituent colors, much like a prism creates a rainbow. When the sun is near the horizon, its light passes through a thicker layer of atmosphere, enhancing this refraction effect. The different colors of light are refracted to varying degrees, with green light being bent slightly more than red and yellow light. As the sun sets, the last rays of green light are the ones that reach our eyes, creating the fleeting green flash. The duration and intensity of the green flash depend on several factors including atmospheric conditions, the clarity of the horizon, and the observer's location. The ideal conditions for observing the green flash occur when the air is clear and stable with minimal turbulence. A flat horizon such as that over the ocean also enhances the visibility of the green flash as it minimizes the amount of atmospheric distortion. While the classic green flash is a fleeting emerald green, variations exist including a blue flash or even a violet flash. These variations depend on the specific atmospheric conditions and the amount of scattering and absorption of different wavelengths of light. The green flash, though elusive, is a testament to the power of nature to create stunning visual displays through the interplay of light and atmosphere. It's a reminder that even in the seemingly mundane act of a sunset, there are hidden wonders waiting to be discovered by those who know where and how to look. And there you have it, five incredible natural wonders that were once thought to be supernatural. From the dazzling northern lights to the elusive green flash, these phenomena have inspired awe and wonder for generations. Thanks to modern science, we now understand the natural processes behind these wonders, transforming myths into knowledge. As we continue to explore the world around us, we're constantly reminded of the power and beauty of nature, a source of endless fascination and inspiration.